Anyway, is the Mark VI that popular because of who played it or because of its... <laughs> Hi there, welcome to today's vlog. There are a few more evocative words in the saxophone player's vocabulary than the words Selma Mark VI. I was doing a little bit of research for this video because came across this article, as I'm sure probably you, maybe you came across this video on YouTube. Now it's a very well written article, it's a good story. Uh, there's a couple of inaccuracies. For example, Coltrane did not play a Mark VI on the I Love Supreme sessions. He was playing on a super balanced action, uh, but we'll let them ride for that. It's a really good story about Sonny uh, and his relationship with his Mark VI. And all of us have relationships with our saxophones. And I've got to say, Selma Mark VI's it's a great way to start an argument with a group of saxophone players. For example, is the Mark VI so popular with jazz saxophonists because all their favourite jazz saxophone players played them? They played them for the same reasons. For example, you know, Sonny Rollins plays one, Coltrane played, did play a Mark VI later on in his career. Um, so do peep everybody else end up playing Mark VI's because their heroes played them? That's a part of it. But I've got to say, over the last few months, and I can't go into too much detail on here, but... There's definitely, there was an opportunity presented itself for me to change my tenor and to play a modern horn. A modern horn that was very close to my Mark VI. And we were just having some opening discussions about it. And I couldn't, I didn't go with it mainly because I couldn't find the sound that I want in any other saxophone, particularly any other saxophone full stop apart from the tenor I have. I picked that tenor out of a room of about 25 different Mark Sixes. I spent a long time going through and it was the saxophone that I chose um, that it gives me the sound I want. Now, I've been very fortunate that one of my adult students has lent me, as well as the mouthpieces I was discussing in this video, he's left me his Mark VI to play. His Mark VI is a 1958 uh, Selma Mark VI in original lacquer, I think. We're not quite sure if it has had a re-lacquer. It's been a, done a very good job on it. And I thought we'd do a little bit of a blindfold test. Can you tell the difference between my, now, mine is officially listed as 1956, but as I said in this vlog, when I found out the history from Selma, mine was actually made in 1955, um, and then, but wasn't sold till 1956, hence why it's said to be a 56 as for, per its serial number, but it actually was completed in 1955. So there's three years between these two horns, maybe two and a half years between the two. Certainly, I know Selma today think that people buy too much into the legend, but I've got to say, when I play the different horns, there is definitely a Mark VI sound, and amongst the vintage horns, it's the easiest to play. So therefore, for me, it allows me to deliver the results I want with the sound I want with the most ease of playing. That's where I get to in my six. Anyway, let's hear them being played. I'm going to pixelate them out. I'm going to play my six with back to the stock neck again. I'm not going to use uh, the KB Sax Vanguard neck. I'm just going to go back to the stock neck. Both horns are going to play the same mouthpiece, which is my Otto Link Super Tone Master early 60s on an eight with a Didario Select Jazz 3M reed file. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
So this is the 1958 Mark VI on a 7.4 serial number. This is mine on a 6.7, the 1955. Probably a bit like on my last vlog when I was doing the mouthpieces. I will have noticed more differences between the horns than you did because when I've gone back and edited the footage, albeit very, very briefly, just recently, I noticed that between the two horns when you're listening, there's very, very little difference. But to me personally playing them, there is definitely a difference. And there's definitely a difference in the way I'm playing. I'm much freer on my own instrument than I am on a strange instrument, even though this instrument is extremely closely related to it. And there's definitely a freedom that comes when you're playing an instrument every single day. And that shouldn't be discounted. There is an awful lot to the maxim that you should stick with the gear you've got, listen a hell of a lot more, and work like a dog. But having good tools to do the job is also very, very important. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I've, I've had great fun playing this horn. There's definitely, however, there's definitely a small leak on this one. Now there's definitely a tick here for the root pads. Mine has black root pads on, and this one doesn't. Especially that bottom stack. However, I do think that bottom stack needs looking at by a tech. I know this has been serviced. I don't think it's been overhauled. This has been overhauled, as I mentioned in this vlog. So this is two years after an overhaul. Been played every single day still sounding very very good this is great there's just a bit of clunk going on there anyway i really need to get twenty thousand pounds worth of saxophones off this very cheap ikea table before any disasters happen so i never really told you did i sax number one was this one the 1958 and sax number two was mine with the original neck i can definitely tell how the kb uh, custom neck it really is does give my saxophone a little bit more power a bit more darkness this one very very surprised with how well it sounded it's got a bit more edge to the sound on it hasn't it maybe i was pushing it a bit harder because it wasn't my normal horn anyway i hope you found that interesting certainly what's noticeable is there is a mark six sound there definitely between these of the same decade so uh, let me know what you guys think i'm going to be back with a vlog jeff was asking about this i'm kind of all menard about it because the footage isn't amazing from sats.co.uk but I kind of it might fill in a decent useful point to give you the option of hearing the uh, Atlia Yamaha versus a standard Yamaha custom. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out I can't point to it, but my last vlog here. Uh, this is what I was up to this time last year. Hit that subscribe button and please hit the like and the bell button as well. Thank you very much for watching. I can't even hit the screen for you, so I'll see you soon. Bye bye.